So I think it's evident historically that you cannot rely on a man. And so personally, when I say traditional with the twist, I'm not going to ever put myself in a position where you know, I have to completely rely on a man. I sign a bad prenup and I have to beg a man to buy me a piece of bread. I'm just not going to do that. And so I feel like, you know, my money is my money so that I can invest in building myself, right? As I'm now in this relationship and I'm aging, right? And your money is to provide for the unit. And so if that looks like (laughs) taking care of the bills, because if I'm having children, I'm not working. I'm taking care of the kids. I'm taking care of the house. And so I don't think, again, I don't think that's asking for much. I think that's asking for a... Prevent- but you're, sa- you're saying in a, a marriage, let's yes, say, yes. you're saying the money you earn yes. is your money. Yes. The money for he rainy earns day. is yes. our money. For the household, yes. But... So to me, that doesn't say partnership, though. Like, what, what But are it you- is partnership because... Explain it to me. Because, you know, when you're in a marriage... Right. Especially if you are having children with someone, I'm giving my life, my womb, I'm giving my time, my focus, my earning potential. Um, And so he is able to go out in the job market, the workforce, continue to excel. And now I'm taking years off to watch the children. Right. And so I need to make sure that I'm protecting myself if things go awry. Right. But but what you're saying, Kim, to me, what it sounds like is I am planning on this not working out. When if you're living in service to a partnership, Mm -hmm. that money is I am earning this money to build us collectively. It sounds to me like you're saying, I am earning this money for me because you've given me children and you're going to pro- pro- provide stability. Mm-hmm. And then the second I get tired of this, at least I have some money in my pocket to walk away from it. No, I, I don't I don't see it like that. I see it more so like I am protecting myself because I understand that 50% of marriages end in divorce. Not that anyone goes into- Do 50% of marriages end in divorce because of attitudes like that? Yeah, because you're wanting a, <laughs> okay. you're wanting a guarantee. You're, you're, I think you're going and wanting a guarantee. And I truly believe that um, once you think it and you have that mindset, it will happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it will happen because you're already setting yourself up to, to kind of have the fail safe because you want a guarantee mm-hmm. and you want to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. You go in, but, but I mean, but is a, um, is a prenup protecting yourself? You know, when yeah. you, you think about that. So that's true. I mean, well, it depends on what terms you're that, that you're putting in. Safe. Yeah, exactly. But I also think that, especially because I'm coming from the Gen Z perspective, right? And so we've seen the silent generation, right? Our grandmothers, um, our grandfathers had their cake and they got to eat it too. Mm-hmm. So I make all the money. You take care of the kids. I can do whatever I want. You take care of the household. Mm-hmm. I can beat on you. I can cheat on you. And you're not going to go anywhere. Then we have our mothers, the baby boomers, right? Overcorrect. I'm an independent. I can earn my own living. And then at the same time, they still have their husbands. They have their cake. They eat, they eat it too. Great. You go to work. And when you're done with work, you come home, you take care of the kids, you cook, you clean, and you take care of me. And so now it's Gen Z and we're trying to protect ourselves, right? Mitigate the risk of, well, I need to be independent and provide for myself, but I also want to have a partner that can provide for the household and for us. And that's, I suppose, where we're at. Your, your house is different. My, my house is different um, because I make the most money. However, when I'm thinking about providing, I don't think that it is just money. Mm-hmm. I don't think that um, it is. So, so even though I may be bringing home more cash, mm-hmm. my husband, um, even before before we started, oh, Lord, <laughs> hey, honey, before we, <laughs> before we started, <clears throat> you know, um, separating, he was still working at the FDA. I mean, he would cook, clean, he'd do the laundry. And people were like, well, what did you do? I said, thank you. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I did. Yeah. I was grateful. And I saw it. I see you. I appreciate you. And I'm not doing it. Because if I'm cooking at the office, I don't want to cook at home. People assume that I am cooking just because I cook for my living that I am cooking at home. Mm-hmm. I had no interest in actually cooking at home. Now, when I look at our lives now, providing means being a moral support for me. Mm-hmm. It means um, it, it is that sense of protection. It is sort of being a, a sounding board for me. It is still 
um, looking at our finances and I mean, even though I have a team, but it, it he brings he provides in different ways other than just cash and money and mm-hmm. bank accounts. Mm-hmm. Did, but was was it ever was the inverse ever true? Was he ever the one who was making the money? Yes, yes. Yeah. So when I was working on the Chew, when we first got together, I I'm a serial entrepreneur. So all of my money goes back into the business, like everything. And so I didn't get married until I was 44. And I was used to just putting this money back in. And when I tell you, when we got married, I was still borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. We needed his salary. He he was working while I was able to basically carve out my path. And it only changed. I did seven seasons of The Chew It only changed the last season of The Chew because my money was spent living here in New York, going back and forth, um, maintaining my businesses that were in D.C. And when I um, when we got that last contract and they opened up my contract and I started making more money, I turned to him. I said, "Okay, what do you want to do? Yeah, because you he had already supported me doing what I wanted to do. Now it's like, let me look at you and say, what do you want to do? We ended up and leading up to that, saving his salary for a year so that he would feel comfortable, you know, just going out and doing the things. And he never looked back. Wow. And you guys are happy. And we're happy. Would you be open to that, Kim? You're turning 60 this year? Yes. When I turn 60, I have no clue where I will be in life. Exactly. I think at 26, (laughs) though, I am allowed to ask for these things, right? You had a partner that was able to pour into you. Mm -hmm. And in the inverse, down the line, you are now able to pour into your partner. I'm still at the foundational Mm -hmm. point of my life. And so it's very, very important for me if I am going to consider a partnership I have to make sure that I am set up for success. But how do men respond? When you say this to men, like are the, the when you go out on dates, mm-hmm. th- does this conversation come up? And what, what is that conversation like? Yeah, it does. It does come up. Um, I'm Nigerian. And so I typically will date Nigerian men mm-hmm. and they get it. Yeah, and they, they understand that, what that, kind that, of that is. Me. Yeah, okay. I mean, I mean that's, that's all you have to say. Yes. That's all yeah. you have to say. You, a, shoot, a Nigerian man wants to provide for you. I mean, that that's in their matriarchal, I mean, yeah. their patriarchal system. Yeah, mm-hmm. they and okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> However. If, because I don't m- just date within my race, okay. right? So I'm not really? just dating. No, I don't. Oh, I've, dated, I've dated all around the world from all the different continents. However, Do you notice that different men oh, respond my, differently? Yes. Um, and so I have tended to Jewish, Nigerian, West African, African in general, um, Middle Eastern men, they understand as well. Now, when we talk about American men, mm-hmm. that is when you have to start defining things. And Mm -hmm. this is what I want. And this is why I want it. And you have to explain yourself, over explain yourself (laughs) because they just don't get it, you know? Um, So I try, I, I date for my audience. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I want to ask you, 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 you're 26 and you also realize that you need someone who is older and more established. Yes. So you have, you have a type, but that type is basically what that person has, mm-hmm. not who he is. I don't agree with that. Okay. I don't agree with that. I think if we're talking about gender roles, then yes, my type is a protector and a provider. Mm-hmm. But in terms of who he is, I'm not going to just accept a man because he can protect and provide because that same man can take advantage of you. That mm-hmm. same man can leave you with absolutely nothing. That same man cannot pour into you, mm-hmm. right? That same man can make you work for every single dollar that he is using to support you. Yes. And so I think there's a lot of qualities that I have on my checklist um, that go beyond finances and if you can put a roof over my head and support me when I have our children. Um, so I, it's more than that. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the whole conversation around gender roles has changed significantly because like we said, we're women, we're working, we're building careers. Um, you went to GW, yes. uh, you know, college in D.C. 
Um, you know, you weren't trying to get your MRS degree, like you, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're getting an education to build a career. I think for me, honestly, it would be really hard for me to abandon my career at this point to live in service to an individual. I could live in service to the relationship, but an individual is different. And so when I hear you say, uh, when you're talking about, um, you know, like a protector and a provider, I have a hard time accepting that someone else is providing. And I'll tell you what the new currency is when you get older can you love me back? Can you wipe my ass when I'm in the, when I'm no longer capable 